Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. Back with another gardening video. So today, mom and I are making little milk jug greenhouses. I've seen this a bunch on YouTube. I know Laura over at Garden Answer, Garden Answer I'm blanking on her name, um, has done it and she's done it because a lot of other people have done it. So we are excited to try it. Um, we have a whole bunch of milk jugs and our seeds. So I've got a couple seeds, but essentially we are going to be doing some foxglove seeds. And these are the Camelot mixture from Johnny's Seeds. They are a F1 pelleted seed, which means that they bloom the first year because of course foxgloves are but annual and they typically only bloom on their second year. So if you start these in the fall, it is now October. Probably should have done it last month, but we were on a cruise they will bloom the first year. So we have them in rose, we have them in white, and we have them in lavender. So pinkish red, purple, and white. Pelleted just means they're bigger because foxglove seeds are oh, minuscule. teeny, teeny, tiny. Um, so we also have some lupin seeds, and these are like I have a million of these in this package. It was the only kind they had, but it's literally a quarter pound of lupin seeds. So I also have a couple other things in here we might want to do, but I'm not sure. Mainly those poppy seeds that we might want to try some of those. But essentially, we're going to have to count our milk jugs and see how many we have. You can overseed your containers just a little bit, but essentially at next spring when we take these babies out of here, we want four, maybe five good sized seed plants in each one. So if we plant say 10 seeds or 15 seeds in this plant, in this jug, we will have to thin them out as the season goes on to make sure they're not overcrowded as they're growing. But for today, that is the plan. Essentially we're gonna do foxgloves. I would say maybe a couple containers of lupins. And I think with the number of milk jugs we have, that's probably going to be our main focus because those are the main things we want to grow this year. <laughs> but we have some seed starting mix. We have a Sharpie to write on the container, whether it's pink, lavender, or white, because by the time we go to plant these out in the garden, they won't be blooming yet. And uh, we have an X-Acto knife to cut our containers and we have some duct tape to seal them. We have a spray bottle to water the seeds after they've been planted. I have my hose so we can pre-moisten the soil if need be, and we each have a set of gloves. So I'm going to show you with the first one, and then we'll probably put you on fast forward because we've got a lot to get through, and we're fighting the sun. We don't want to be out here once it gets too hot and sunny in our face. So essentially, you're going to start on either side of the handle. You're supposed to cut all the way around using the handle as a hinge. So let's see how easy or difficult this is. So far it's not hard, maybe just tedious. Yeah. Mom said she thinks probably one of us will cut and one will fill, which Sounds about accurate. We definitely don't need two people, but I mean, two people makes anything in life easy. Plus, some are from my garden, some are for her garden. So, I'm not sure. Am I supposed to cut through here and just leave the handle, you think? Because right now it's yeah. not open. Yeah. Yeah. That's better. So the next step is to poke a bunch of drainage holes. Now the idea with these many greenhouses is that you leave the cap off and they will collect moisture and water as it rains over the season and you don't need to water them that often. Now we live in an area that's that's not very rainy some parts of the year. Like we had a month, month and a half this summer where it just rained every day. 
all day long. And then for the last month, it's hardly rained at all. So if it's not raining, you do need to go water your seeds, especially at the beginning before they've sprouted. But once they've gotten going, it's less important, I would say. All right, I use that for a second when you're done. Yeah. We also have the vinegar jugs. So milk jugs are usually just okay. Are you, did you lose the cap? Yeah, it's right here. So typically a lot of people use milk jugs just because they're easy to get. A lot of people drink milk every day, but soda containers, vinegar containers, really anything works. I see. slide this down since you're cutting and I'm going to need the dirt catcher. <laughs> I'm very coordinated. hose to kind of like pre-moisten this soil. last night while we were watching TV. Can you open this real quick? All right, so our garden center only had a few bags of this seed starting mix. So we had to go off book and we just have potting soil and then our seed starting mix. So we're gonna fill the bottom of the containers with our potting soil and the top with the seed starting mix. That way the seeds can grow from the seed starting mix down into the regular soil. Not sure that's the best solution, but it is the one we've got. So it is, and it is more cost effective. It's just not as good for your seeds. A lot easier to poke the holes in the bottom before you cut them. Huh, good to know. All right, so now that we've got our dirt moistened, let's look at our seeds here. And you wanna follow the instructions on your packet in case your packet is different than ours. But these say, so 10 to 12 weeks before last frost, which there you go. Do not cover seed as light aids germination, bottom water, or mist to avoid covering the seed. So there you go. Since we are doing these before the winter, we should have plenty of time. They should germinate just fine, but these are so little. So we have 50 seeds in each one. So do we want to do 10 in each one or do we want to do five? Okay, that means we can do five containers. Of course, if all 10 sprout, we can always get more milk jugs and move five of them to a different milk jug. There's nothing that says when we thin these out, they have to go in the trash. 
So I'm gonna go ahead, spray the top of this so it's a little more moist. You don't wanna cover these like it said. And then I'm going to place them on the front or on top. They're very little. You can use um, like a toothpick or the end of a paintbrush or something to pick them up with. I've seen people do that. But since these are pelleted, they're a lot easier to lift. Not as necessary. I'm going to mist them now. And remember, once you moisten your seed and it cracks that outside edge, you're in it. You're in it to win it, which means if it doesn't rain, I need to come out here and mist through the top of this every day until they start to germinate for sure. But at least through what the first month or two of the seeds life is very important to keep them moist. So we're going to go ahead and uh, seal her up. Do you have your phone, mom? This is useless. Let me get you. Acorn drop in time. You can see the seeds are the little yellow dots. So that is how little they are. And I did try to put a couple inches in between all of them, but sometimes they just kind of kind of roll around. And that's that's part of why you want to use pre-moistened soil. They roll less. easier to do with two people. To do what part? The tea part. Okay, I don't know. I'm mean, having a hard time with this first portion. Maybe once I get that done, it won't be as hard. I don't think it needs to be perfect. We're not necessarily trying to keep, you know, moisture out or anything. We just want to keep it from it that falls over disturbing everything. And then if you're going to pick this up, I'd pick it up from the bottom and we'll move it aside. Wait, you got a mark on it. What, what to do? Good call, Mom. So these are lavender. I'm going to do the whole one on one, and then we'll use that to kind of separate them. And then I'll probably just put LAV on the rest of them. And this is a garden marker, so it won't wash off if it gets rained on. All right, I'm going to put y'all on fast forward because we've got a lot of these to do and you don't need to watch every single one.
All right, y'all. So it has been, what would you say, an hour or two maybe? Two hours. Two hours. We got most of the seeds planted, all of the foxgloves, all of the, we did some puppies and some asters. We'll see how those do. Um, typically those need a cold period and we don't get super cold here. Um, we tried broadcasting them out. All right, so it is the next day and we are back. We have our seeds. I will try to get a close up of you, of you, of them for you, but they are definitely softer. A lot of the hard shells have opened. So that is the goal. They said with lupin seeds, you soak them because you need to really, um, break that outer hard shell. So a bunch of things online did say that if you, if you don't have time to soak them, you can use a blade to kind of nick the outer shell and give the seed a place to grow out of, but that's not as good as soaking them. So we went ahead and soaked them. And I mean, it's been, they said 24 hours is recommended, but it's probably been about 18. Well, we left here yesterday at like one or two and it's 10. So we're a couple hours shy, but only a couple, close enough for government work. We're gonna go ahead and start filling our containers. I don't know why I thought I needed these gloves. Well, wait, we have to cover them with dirt. So what did the package say? We have to cover them with yeah, a, layer of dirt. a layer of dirt. I will, after we do a couple. So how many are we gonna put in each? Container. Ten. I don't know if that was a shell or a. I don't know. It looks like the manifest. It does. That's okay. Yeah, you can definitely fill. Yeah, they're a very light color. Let's see if we put ten in each one. Is that not ten? No, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That one already has a little bit of a tail. Yeah, that root. And then as they grow, if all 10 of these germinate, then we will take a, few. take a few out. And we can either toss them or we will probably start putting them in a different container. Go ahead and take this baby up. Put y'all on fast forward. We have 17 containers to do. And then I will show you the area where we're putting them. I also bought one of those pump up um, misters or sprayers. It has an adjustable nozzle that you can use to put out pesticide. You can also use it to put out water or fertilizer. I figured that would be better for when I do have to mist these. Um, instead of using one mister, having to get down and spray right into each hole, I'll be able to stand up, put the wand in, mist all the way down the line. Cause I've got, we've got probably 40 to 50 of these. Yeah. So having to miss each of them every day for the first two weeks, if it's not raining at all, that could be a while with a single spray bottle. So don't worry. I figured that will help either way. I might be able to use it in the fall instead of my big, Watering can for fertilizer, we'll see. I'm not sure if that or the watering can will be better. So we're gonna go ahead and put y'all on fast forward to finish these off. Oh, we didn't cover it with soil. Oh, I was like, I'm t why did I do this glove again? Oh yeah, the soil. I prefer to do everything with my right hand, but I think I'd rather do seeds with my right hand and soil with the left. Two and we're just doing about a quarter inch thick to half an inch of loose soil over the top. You don't want it to be compacted because those little seeds are very, weak. are very weak. They need nice, soft, fluffy soil to go up through. So now we'll put you on fast forward.
So we're going to go across the field of weeds into the side of the shed. So you want to put your little milk jug greenhouses somewhere they'll get sun and rain when it rains, but fairly protected from wind. So you can see where I started lining them up here. And we've got little rows of all of our F1 is our Camelot foxgloves that bloom the first year. Then we have some pink asters, and some coral poppies. So now we're gonna make a little row of all our lupins. We'll be back. All right, so here's our little army of milk jugs. We have four asters, two pink poppies, two oriental poppies. I'm not sure that any of those will germinate or grow because all of these need a bit more cold time than we typically have, but we figured it was worth the uh, worth the risk. We had the seeds from that experiment last year, and we'll see. So then we have mom's butt. <laughs> we have five of the F1 rose, five of the S1 white. We have one, two, three, four here of foxglove that are not F1s. These are true biennials, um, the pink gen and the Dalmatian peach. We have another F1, which are the first lavender. year bloomers, and those are lavender. So those are all three colors that Johnny's Seed offers in that F1 blooms the first year variety. Then we have 17 lupins. Hopefully those will take because we would like some more lupins. They're very expensive in our area. Lupins are a little finicky though, like they don't like to be, they don't like to be transplanted, especially in our area. They take transplanting a bit better in cold areas. Mom mm -hmm. says they don't. She's never had luck, but I've seen a lot of people on YouTube yeah. with plenty of luck. So. I had them in Colorado and they did not like to be transplanted. And I had so. them all over my yard, but they came back every year beautifully yeah. in that area. They so essentially they say the lupins, as soon as the soil is able to be worked in the spring and these are big enough to be planted out you want to transplant them immediately that way they can grow as long as possible in the ground and then the four asters which i said at the beginning so that's it we're done milk jug heaven now you can see um some of the ones from yesterday most of the ones from yesterday have condensation drops inside the milk jugs that's what we want as long as they have condensation drops we don't need to come over here and mist and water them. But if we come over here and there's no condensation drops, especially the first two, three weeks while they're germinating, mist them. From there, maybe every two, three days. So that's what we got to check. We'll keep you updated. See you, see you later. Bye.